you know, they're looking at things like that, the intangibles mm-hmm. that, you know, aren't taught. You can, you can teach the fundamentals. You can teach them where to be. You can put them on time. You can put them, but like the, the head and mind space and drive and diligence and persistence and confidence and scratching, clawing, sleeping on couches and coaches' offices, yeah. like you can't make that up. All right, welcome back to the Pure Playbook Podcast. I'm Dr. Dustin Boston with the athletic trainer herself, Erin Rajiri. Super excited as we continue our efforts to bring information, education for parents and student athletes that they can trust, uh, elite level healthcare resources as well. So super exciting as we start to round off the school year. We've got a lot of commits that we've had under care going to continue their athletic career in college so super exciting make sure you follow along on the social medias at the pure athlete across i think every, i think it's yeah. consistent across everything twitter facebook instagram the talk the talk the tick the tick of the talk the tick tack uh youtube go ahead and subscribe give us some feedback interact with us let us know if there's any questions you have going forward this one's going to be good one of my favorite times of the year we've got racing We've got playoff hockey, and unfortunately, we're going to talk about one of those things today with an injury from one of our local town boys, but uh, a few good things to talk about here as we start to head towards spring weather. It's warm, a lot of fun. What do you got? How's Aaron? Good. Um, We are getting ready for summer season of dance, so that's just, it's the most exciting season. You're planning out everything for the next year of their season, so... I, of course, enjoy that part of setting everything up. (laughs) Controlling what you can control. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) This is my control. (laughs) Structure. Yep. Heaven forbid these kids have structure. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) All right. Well, let's dive in. As we kick this off, we are going to go back to, we've done quite a few pure athlete evaluations in our practice. Uh, Some of you have seen that have kept up with the podcast on the video side. You're starting to see this area specifically develop. Uh, We've got our gym floor in, Mm -hmm. our purple and silver and white spec gym floor as we continue to train athletes better based on this evaluation. And I will loop this into why we're talking about this, but we had a, gosh, what is she, 10 years old? Mm -hmm. 10 years old. She did the evaluation yesterday. Yeah, she broke in the new floor. So awesome. So swimmer. Swimmer, she does uh, cheer, gymnast. Mm-hmm. So that's super exciting. We had another collegiate athlete take off and do that. We get to go over that with him this week. And we've had a couple re-ups so we get to see mm-hmm. the before and afters. And the reason I want to bring this up is because we've created this evaluation to really analyze all athletes. Yeah. We've had parents do it too. We've had a couple adults do it too. They're like, oh, I want to do this yeah. because they are active. Um, we always talk about, you know, well, who do you see? Like, who can we help refer to you? And it's like, we want to see student athletes and their parents trying to keep up mm-hmm. um, on the practice side. So at Vital Performance, through the Pure Athlete, um, that's really who we want to see. And we, so we've had parents do this too. But we created this evaluation so we can get more data and literally look at where these vulnerabilities are. Mm -hmm. And at the core of, and we've added to this evaluation, but at the core of this evaluation, it was based on uh, ACL injuries. Mm -hmm. And it was a study done by a a PT student at the time, now doctor, Dr. Trent Nessler, who uh, his whole thesis, so to speak, was based on Uh, the vulnerability of ACL uh, injuries and what is the predispositions, how do we analyze that? So that's where the the core of this technology came in. Now we're able to also analyze through this evaluation other areas of the body, hip, and then we can go into an upper body evaluation. But we've started, we've created that evaluation because we know a lot of these parents and athletes they want more data. They're mm-hmm. built differently. They're training differently. Yeah. The time and effort put in and, and their expectations and what do they really want to do. But they're all talking about performance, injury prevention, recovery, mm-hmm. and people are starting to get it why this is so important beforehand instead of being reactive. So being able to set up a space like this yeah. and train them based on data and give them the right things to do, show them how to lift, what to lift, when to lift it, the... the um, 
the structure that you need to have to do it, the pitfalls and why you don't want to do it this mm -hmm. way. Because there's also a lot of training hacks. And I say hacks, not as like shortcuts. There's a lot of training hacks out there. <laughs> that, well, no, I'm talking the other side. Like <laughs> hacks, like I mean, these guys are some hacks. That, but we, we see a lot of the aesthetic we like to see. Sex sells, right? That's, mm -hmm. But we see how somebody looks and what they're doing. And maybe they have some sort of influence. Yeah. They don't have a lot of background, but they're showing you what lifts they do. And they might not be doing them right, but because they hold a physique, a power, a strength that you desire, we tend to gravitate to doing those things, mm -hmm. which is understandable. Yeah. But we want to make sure we're building athletes better. And showing them how to lift is so important. So based on this evaluation we've created, and then having a space like this to show them what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. We are, as of right now, we're not a gym. Like some of these kids, we'll have a small group of clientele that can take advantage of that. But we're just gonna have a place where we can actively engage with them. And we can do weekends and do lift yeah. weekends for ages from, from 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. And how do we start to get them lifting? What are some things to look for? And then we can do 12 to 14. We can do 14 to 18 and put some things on over the weekends or, or you know, vertical, um, vertical challenges yeah. so to speak to increase vertical increase agility dive strength all those kinds of things so we're building this out to do this because then you hear about a lot of the injuries that potentially could have been prevented so don't hear what i'm not saying i'm not saying we can prevent everything from happening where we take care of athletes we are athletes your kids or yourself you are an athlete and you don't live in a bubble there's going to be times where you take a hit and something's going to break and tear. Yeah. Like that's, you know, I wouldn't say inevitable, but it can happen. So don't hear what I'm not saying, but we can also, I, and I think everybody would agree with this, there's things that you can do mm -hmm. to provide the most amount of prevention possible. Yeah. Because at the end of the season, as we're making this tear to try to make the wild card as, as you know, the St. Louis Blues being our local team here, who we all love, St. Louis is a very strong based fan support city. But Oscar Sundquist tears his ACL. Yeah. And it's like, okay. So immediately we jump to, ah, damn, that sucks. A key player. We're in a playoff rush. And we missed the playoffs by a game, game and a half, or points in hockey. So, you know, point or two. Yeah. That's a bummer. But could we have saved an injury based on how the mechanism happened. Right. Um, and doing this evaluation is very important. So that was March 25th. Um, Blue's ACL on his right knee. And we've talked a lot throughout the podcast on football seasons, you know, soccer. We've had so many injuries that we've kind of kept up with in some segments on here. And uh, it's just very unfortunate to see. So it, it really drives us to want to see these kids younger. And even I did meet a couple of professional athletes over the weekend who are very excited about this as well. So that's super cool. But it's very important because, I mean, even at that level, mm -hmm. it's not that they're doing the wrong things or they're not doing nothing at all. Yeah. It's just that this evaluation is a big deal we're yeah. finding and we're getting feedback from people like professional players that are like wait really yeah. like you can do that which is super cool yeah I think it's kind of a newer thing that like it's kind of becoming the standard of care that should be given to athletes um so it's really like right now up to the individual athlete to seek things out that are going to better them yeah but what I would love to see is that it becomes like a it is mandatory for anyone to do that who is playing with a certain team um it's like they're physical, but yeah. this is actually telling you data versus just checking off boxes. And especially in hockey, you have to like, it's more about reaction and neuromuscular control than it is like maybe you fall on something and you mm -hmm. get, you get tackled from the inside, like that kind of stuff. It's more reactionary and you can't train reactionary. Right. You have to train the neuromuscular system, which is what we can do now. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in a sport like hockey, you're on ice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so you have to be training in the same way that you're going to be competing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that the blues don't do that. They're a great organization, right, but right, even right. just starting like how your kids are now, like they should be doing that stuff now mm -hmm. so that whenever they are, whenever they are on the blues, <laughs> they don't have to worry about thinking about, Oh, my knees, my knees this way, my ankles this way. And they can actually just play the game. Right. Right. And it's, it's really amazing you don't see more ACL injuries in mm -hmm. hockey. And you brought up the ice, which is like, you. now this is just off the cuff. You, you saying that this is off the cuff because we talk a lot about turf. We yeah. talk about the alternate and it's like, oh man, we see, we see there's a big deal about that. And I think people are actively looking at that now on to make it better. But I want to think, and we'll have to look into this. We might have to call Dr. Trent and ask him about this, see what he thinks. 
but maybe the lack of ACL injuries in hockey really is because the ice is slick. Imagine yeah. not having something that you can stick to. It's yeah. like you'd rather your legs slide out when yeah. you take an impact like that. Um, I wonder I, yeah. I wonder what, what that thought process would be. That would be interesting to figure out. Yeah, but. I feel like my thought process is a lot of the teams that you see that someone gets hurt on turf, it's because they're not practicing on turf. Right. Whereas hockey, like, you're always going to be <laughs> on that ice. There isn't, like, another option to put your socks on and play hockey, and you're, like, that's not an option. It's always ice time. Right. And so they're used to that. That's my – my brain goes to, like, they've grown up doing that, and they're used to that so that it's not – a huge change whenever they, you know, go to, yeah. isn't it MetLife is like cursed mm-hmm. or yeah, they're not going to MetLife randomly on a Sunday. Could you imagine to play. getting your NFL schedule this year and being like game one, week one, MetLife. You're like, oh. so I'm actually not playing that game. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. That's my thought process though. So yeah, we, we had an ACL injury kind of cost us a season, but it just, just kind of wanted to bring that up as, as just a topic of continuing why we're doing what we're doing and, and giving you guys some insight and, you know, giving the trickle down effect on why we're so intentional on doing this. And, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to fire hose through this all at once. Um, as we, you know, we don't want to throw it all into one podcast all at once and, and bore people with our geeky nerdy side of our evaluation. But it is very important because stuff like this could have been prevented. Maybe. Um, was it the impact that did it? And it was inevitable. Maybe, but everybody, it's nice to hear. And like I said, having the 10 year olds do this, the 12 year olds do this collegiate athletes doing this and the feedback we've gotten from even professionals at this point has been super good. Um, where do you want to go next? Well, I think, um, the biggest thing that's kind of been all over my tick, my tick tech yeah. is the masters. So I'm not really? a not a golf girl, okay? All I, over, huh? I'm not a golf girl. I'm a golf cart rider girl. That's <laughs> that's I just you know sunbathe. <laughs> um, but this personal year personal bartender in the cart. I'm the DJ. I just <laughs> usually have it on. I just usually have it on the seat. On the ox, as you would call it. Yeah, on the ox, <laughs> as usual. Um, but Scotty, who um just won his second this year, mm, two in a row. Yep, he brought his caddy of two years, uh, Ted to walk with him and lead him through the crowds as they like, you know, to take their victory lap, Mm -hmm. the green jacket and all the things. (laughs) Um, And I just think that's really cool that they, he was like, okay, no, like you come with me, like you lead. And it reminds me of the Jason Kelsey with the AT taping his ankles. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So it's kind of like a full circle appreciation moment. It's, it's odd to me. They don't give the cat, the winning caddy a green jumpsuit. I know. I thought that, that tiger Rory, I know you're on the board yeah. for the PGA. We need to talk to the masters. Yeah, They need and, a jumpsuit and see if we can get the caddy Cause they wear like the all white, yeah. looks like a mechanic suit. They need to probably suit. shoot me for saying that, but they, they should, if they win as the caddy, they should get a green jumpsuit yes. as a trophy cat for the caddy. For, That'd yeah. be super cool. There's an idea. Mark that down. Somebody steal that. Take it, run it. We'll know where it came from. I don't need the recognition for that. <laughs> TM, 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 TM. <laughs> Been there before. <laughs> so, yeah, Scotty, that's, I mean, and that's huge. And like we had talked about even off the air as we were putting all this together and, uh, you know, Sam came up with this great story and brought this to our attention. It's, it's that kind of respect that everybody needs to have mm-hmm. for who is in their corner and who's been there the longest. Yeah. And I was talking to a, a former blues player this weekend, which was super cool. And, and there'll be more to come on that. But, uh, I, I, I literally told him, I was like, if more professional athletes would hang out with hockey players and golfers, I was like the, the, the status quo of how you should be treating people around mm-hmm. you would exponentially go through the roof yeah and so the fact that he gave his caddy the ability to be recognized and lead through that because what's it mean like if you're going to be so uptight that you feel like you have to be the first one through and you won the tournament no no no. but these guys are so genuinely cool and even just a little gesture like that goes Mm -hmm. a long way with that person because one they're probably not expecting it and they expect you to take that walk and then to turn around and be just totally in awe and enamored with the fact that like wait you want me to it, that just immediately shows awesome respect. Yeah, I think it's just so important that even like not on the athlete side, but just like in the person side that you are showing gratitude and like thanks to the people who help you do anything. Yeah. Um, just because it, it is so easy to get like in the routine of your day and the hustle and bustle, but like you have to turn around and like thank them and be appreciative for the things that they're doing even behind the scenes. Because right. someone like a caddy or the like the AT with the Kelsey's, like they're used to being 
not in the spotlight. Right. And so they're one, like you said, it's going to take them off guard, but also it's probably going to be uncomfortable for them, but like they're going to appreciate it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh it's a cool thing to do. And it's like in being present in that moment, because, you know, we even do it here. I mean, with, with what we're doing with, you know, the vital performance side of the practice mm -hmm. and seeing general population, and we have a great family practice, which is awesome. And how, how, responsive they have been as they've seen us start to grow the yeah. the pure athlete side of the healthcare practice and seeing more student athletes and then so we have all these goals set where it's very easy to you know be grateful and we talk about this all the time it's like how i see it in my head yeah. you know and what i said and how i see it in my head is two different things it's like i am grateful and appreciative but sometimes you don't realize how much you're not showing that mm -hmm. Um, and it will, it can drive a little bit of the divide or it will increase the opportunity for a divide where it's like, look, great people and all, but just kind of lost our way a little bit and wasn't on mission anymore. But so being present in that moment when you have all these goals where it's like, yeah, we're on the masters, man, that's awesome. Um, got to get ready for the RBC next week. Mm -hmm. Got to get ready for the players coming or, uh, for, uh, us open coming mm -hmm. up, you know, in the PGA. Now we're 2000 points up in the standings and it's really easy to get lost in all that where people who aren't in the spotlight, I can guarantee you. So parents and student athletes, listen, the people who are in your corner and not in the spotlight will be very, very quick to be like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. Like love you and all, but are you, you're just going to look right past this. You're not going to celebrate this for yourself and right. take a minute and enjoy and respect what just happened. Right. Let alone you're, you're just going to be like, okay, now we got to get back on the green. We've got practice. And it's like, whoa, whoa, can I take a second to enjoy this with you? But you're not even going to enjoy it for yourself. Mm -hmm. They will be the first to notice. And it's, it's a very, very, it's not even a thin line. It's a thing. So be very careful and take the moment and thank the people and, you know, bless them with something or, I tell people in, in our racing world too, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, fork over sponsorships. So, you know, put their logo on the car and things like that. And in the dirt racing world with the, the, the caliber I race very weakly and things like that. But to even take a signed picture that costs you all of $3 to and sign it and say, thank you so much. This is a huge win. Mm -hmm. It's not even about thank you for the season. Those steps along the way, it's like, hey, finishing top five at the players was awesome. Just want to bless you. Like, here's a watch. Here's a card. Here's a picture. But even at the student athlete level, it's like, here's a picture from this game. I scored two goals. Thank you for all the training. Yeah. You know, thank you for the adjustments. Thank you for taping me. Thank you for being my parents, mm -hmm. like in investing the time. It doesn't take much. And people will know the status and, and where you're at in life. They're not expecting a Rolex. They're not expecting, you know, a $2 million check as a percentage for what you won in a tournament. So it's it's very important that you take the time to do that. Yeah, and on the other flip side of the coin, like the people who are like the caddies, the ATs in the background, like also don't forget the amount of help and um, guidance that you give them, even when mm -hmm. you don't realize it. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just, you know, doing my job. But like, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, don't forget that you also are a pivotal part of whatever the process looks like. It can be something as simple as handing them a Gatorade bottle, but you're still the one handing them a Gatorade right. bottle and you're still someone that they interact with. Um, so it's just important to remember like everyone that you interact with has some kind of part in your journey. And so for everyone that you interact with, you need to leave them with a positive experience because they are part of your journey, but mm. you're also part of theirs. Right. And you're also on camera all the time. Yeah all the time especially now you know people you see all the highlights from like the crowd it's like watch you know watch this guy is you know whoever does this and it's like their reaction can be like they're laughing at somebody who got hurt or yeah. it's like they're cheering for somebody hitting a bad ball or missing a shot and it's like just the class and how that it's just not not a good thing to give off but you are right the people who are in the background it's like if you find yourself being a little resentful because you're not in the spotlight, you need to check yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. You you chose that life, and if you don't want it, change it. Yeah. And if you want to be in the limelight, then work your ass off to get to that point. But also, too, a lot of people at that at that level, you win the Masters, you win a Stanley Cup, or you know you're a tennis player, you're in more of the personal sport, and you have those core people around you, whether mm -hmm. it's a healthcare team or a coaching team, training team, whatever it is, and. If you are in that space, in the background of that limelight, you should have enough of the relationship to where if something's concerning you, it's not appreciated or, you know, you're concerned for them and it's just like, speak up. Yeah. Because if you're in the right scenario and you 
do have the relationship you should have, especially long standing. A lot of these guys have this team yeah, for years. Long time. You should be able to say, Hey, Scotty, awesome win. Love the weekend. Here's what I saw. Mm-hmm. Like, just want to let you know. Don't think anything of it. Like I, I'm not, no judgment here. I just want you to be concerned yeah. about how this is being viewed and what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. So um, feel free to speak up because you might save something or you might uncover something that needs to be dealt with before it comes a bigger thing. Or they might just be like, "Holy cow! I had no idea." Like, thank you for that. Yeah. So speak up. Advocate for them. You're not trying to counteract. You're not trying to tell them what to do. You're advocating for somebody that you probably care about like family, especially in scenarios like those. Yeah. And I mean, you kind of talked about like advocating. We'll just go right into the next one. But <laughs> like uh, Cody Schrader, so local, local man. Mm-hmm. He yeah. grew up here. Yeah. Um, went to Truman, then walked on to Mizzou. Mm-hmm. Now he is going to the 49ers. Um, and as a walk on and as someone who didn't get drafted, he's just signing with the 49ers depending on what this you know looks like he's gonna have to advocate for himself yeah and he has this whole time at Truman at Mizzou you can't just be a walk-on at Mizzou and then become this like household name yeah um so he is going to the 49ers which I think is so cool everyone was like we want him to go to the Chiefs because he's in KC um but at the same time like that's comfortable for him yeah and so I think it's gonna test him a lot to go to the 49ers and learn under those people um but yeah I'm excited to see you imagine somebody like that learning from somebody like Christian McCaffrey. Nah, yeah. And, I mean, just a great, great athlete and has done a lot of things. I mean, has history in the game with his, his dad being, um, you know, an NFL alum as well. And But with what the 49ers have been able to achieve and having a similar stature about him like somebody who's very powerful like Christian. And I think it's super cool. And, and like you said, being uncomfortable, cutting the cord a little bit, getting yeah. away from home. But it was super cool to see the the consistency. And this is where consistency and persistence is huge. So as I go off into the, the mental side and really break this down and overanalyze, it's like the cool thing is, is how his career has gone has been ultra consistent. You know, staying diligent, focusing on the prize, knowing what he wants, goes to a smaller school in northern Missouri, um, plays there, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to go walk on. And then, unfortunately, has some injury at the combine. Yeah. And then, what's he do? Has conversations, sticks with it. Could have given up. It's like, well, combine's done. So, so it like exponentially takes your opportunity yeah. like down. Yeah. Like there's probably no shot. Maybe a practice squad team or something, but probably no shot at that point. And then he basically goes and walks on mm-hmm. in San Francisco, which no slouch of a team yeah. there. So, uh, I think that's super cool, and it, it should be you know, uh, hopefully we can continue through our channels to reach out to him and, and maybe have him pour into this community as well, because that's a story that a lot of athletes need to hear. I think they think if they show up to practice and they put up the stats, that's going to be enough. And 30, 40 years ago, maybe yeah. they're looking at stat lines anymore. They're not really looking for shit on the field. You know, they're looking at things like that, the intangibles mm-hmm. that, you know, aren't taught. You can you can teach the fundamentals. You can teach them where to be. You can put them on time. You can put them, but like the, the head and mind space and drive and diligence and persistence and confidence and scratching, clawing, sleeping on couches and coaches' offices, yeah. like you can't make that up and it's never enough. I just posted something yesterday where it's like you at some point in time you have to realize that you have to put in more time and effort than you're expecting from other people Mm -hmm. and if what they expect from you is this 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 to even have a chance to get drafted or go d1 or d2 or whatever the goal is you have to put in more time than what they are expecting you to put in to even have a chance that will get you ahead Mm -hmm. yeah and at the combine he hurt his hamstring which and they said that he heard it like during a dash or some kind of Mm -hmm. running event. Um, And that's something that we're talking about earlier. Like that kind of injury can be prevented Mm -hmm. if you're taking care of it the same way. I mean, uh, just like wondering, you know, the combine is very intense. (laughs) It's a very serious kind of career pivotal moment for all of these, all of these athletes. And like, what does it look like? before it Mm -hmm. what are they doing beforehand are they just doing the same things they're going to be tested on day and day and day to try to improve and then doing it again under stress Mm -hmm. um what are they doing so that's 
something that kind of ties like the beginning of this to now is right. something like a hamstring or a, a, just a muscle injury can be prevented. Right. hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, there was, so I, I, one of the blues players I did meet super cool. So Braden Shen, I had met this weekend, um, went to one of the local malls here and we were the only ones there. We, we both got in there like as soon as they opened, I was wasting time. He was being intentional with his, he had his son with him. They were going, um, to a local place here in the city to, to hang out and have kind of a dad's day, which is super cool. And, you know, me, not very a starstruck person, but super awesome guy, like really started conversating with me. I looked up and said, you know, hey, Shannon, what's up? And he's like, hey, man, what's going on? And, you know, we just kind of struck up a conversation and I told him what we're doing here. And I asked him a couple things and I was like, you know, mental, physical and relationships were wrapped around. So on the, the phys when we got to the physical side, he's like, the training aspect, he's like, that just has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, this is kind of my off season. And, it, and you know, it's basically June through August is kind of my off season. He's like, I do make sure I have time to, to get away. So when it's from the game, like I get away from the game, he's yeah. like, I'll do tennis, I'll do I'll do golf, you know, or, or pickleball or something like I'll stay active. Mm -hmm. But he's like, the training doesn't really stop because you, if you don't train, like you can fall off very quickly. Right. So, and he talked about having the team, he even mentioned chiropractic. He's mm -hmm. like, you know, chiropractic and getting adjusted. And he hardly knew I was a chiropractor, <laughs> which was super cool. So for him to say that, but it's like the, the consistency in training, the dynamics of training are super, super important and they never stop. A day off can mean a whole lot, but how you warm up, the things that you're doing, the dynamics of what evaluations have you had done? What technology has been hooked to you? Is there more we can find out? And it's don't wait for what's available. Go find what it is you need or ask the questions as an athlete or a parent. It's like, you know, we've had previous hip issues. We've had previous shoulder issues. Is there anything we can do on these body parts or these motions or slap shots or softball or, you know, pitching, whatever it is, mm -hmm. ask more questions. Don't wait and just scour the social and be like, Oh, that's cool. Let's let's wait for the next thing. Yeah. Stop waiting. Start doing. Yeah, and that's we talk a lot about the preparation, and that's just how you prepare for really any like big event. Is mm -hmm. it's okay to not like to put the book down? It's okay to get off the court before a big event. You don't have to waste, uh, use all of that time mm -hmm. to prepare. You're already prepared, and if you weren't, <laughs> that's on you. You don't have to. I think a lot of the times, like we talk about a lot student athletes. Let's talk about the student part for a second. Right. We have a big test. We want to stay up the whole night before preparing. Mm -hmm. That's not going to do anything but stress you out, make you sleep deprived, et cetera. Whereas you're already prepared for the test. Yeah. Same thing. You're already prepared for the game. You're already prepared for the tournament. There's no need to stress yourself out to a point of not preparing yourself well. Right. The act of doing the thing that you need to execute that provides a stat line is no longer the problem. Yeah. You're there. Like, obviously, you can put up the points, the stats. You can, you're, you're X fast. You're, but the, the thing that is standard is your body has to be ready to perform the task. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, like if you make it to that level, now that can go away. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't focus on that. But if you're going to pick where you're going to put your time, mm -hmm. you got to make sure your body is ready take the extra 15 20 30 minutes yeah. ahead of time before going out to do the activity yeah. that you're paid to do and stat line to put up you have to make sure your body's ready to go i would overdo it on that than i would on film honestly mm -hmm. you know that stuff's already done it's in, but every day is important you know every time you get in and start your car did you forget how to drive no but there's a level like i get in the race car car has to warm up that is the same every time. Yeah. I know how to drive the car. The car has suspension hooked to it. It knows how it's going to roll and travel and turn and all these things. But at the very beginning, warming up the powerhouse of what that is, I can jump in the car, not let it warm up, hit the track, go qualify, and boom, engine blown. Why? Yeah. Because it didn't take, the, didn't take enough time to let it do what it needed to do to perform at its best, and it cost you. Yeah, and I think especially right now with, like we said earlier, we have a lot of commits going to schools, and they – all leave like end of June. Yeah. And so this is kind of their time to like get prepared, not only in a physical sense, but in a mental way, in a relationship way, so that whenever they do go and start their sports and in June, July, then they start school in August, they're not kind of double backing and yeah. catching up for what they could have done beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. That was good. Period. Period. <laughs> USA won Worlds? Yes, USA. So I Ohio. I figured we had to get a dance segment in of here. Of course. Right? Um, Ohio was Palm and Jazz, so they won that. And then Weber was Hip Hop, so they won They won that too. Nice. What's next? Anything? Um, no. That's it? Yeah. 
other than the training that they get to do off. There, correct, right? correct. But no more comps? No. Other than studio comps in the area? Yeah, just studio comps. Um, and those are honestly kind of usually winding down middle of May anyway. Mm -hmm. And then we have like recital season mm -hmm. in June, July-ish. And then um, studios go to nationals usually July. And then with August is school. Jeez. So, yeah. Let's go. Winding down. All right. Well... Let's wrap it up. All right. Any final thoughts, thoughts, words, touches, phrases? No. Moral outrages? Uh, no. No? No new news? Not yet. Man. All right. Lips are sealed. Well, we do have uh, another leak for you. I think we kind of mentioned we had an app being developed. Well, it's developed. We're finalizing the inside of the Pure Athlete app. So that'll be super cool, all in efforts to continue to build the playbook for these athletes and their parents. So we will be releasing more on that, so stay tuned. We are almost finished with the final phase of the first phase of building out this training area for yeah. our athletes that are local. Uh, so super excited to continue to re release that. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. See ya. <laughs>